Just imagine, you desperately need to go to the toilet. But we have closed down all the toilets in this building. It sounds like a nightmare, but some people will never wake up from this nightmare. My colleague just came home the other day and said, wow, now he had seen it. An informal settlement with no single toilet. People have to do what they have to do in the open. If you're a woman, this means you will have to do it at night. But it's not only informal settlements. More than a third of the world population is still waiting for a safe toilet. And the costs are immense. One and a half million of children die every year from diarrhea. With safe toilets and good hygiene, most of those children would not have to die. Why is this so difficult? Well, we all pretend that we don't know what ends up in a toilet. I grew up on a Danish pig farm, so I cannot pretend that I don't know. <laughs> I became an environmental engineer because I got fascinated by wastewater treatment plants when I was 16. That wastewater treatment plants, that this whole general solution of flush toilets, sewers, wastewater treatment plants, that that doesn't function in this area, in an informal setting. That's clear. Just try to plan a sewer network there and to build it. But it's not only informal settlements. There are many more problems with our standard solution to urban hygiene. I was fascinated with 16, but in the meantime, many people, including myself, have realized that that will not be the solution to the problems of wastewater treatment in the 21st century. One of the main problems with this system, apart from such areas, is water scarcity. A sewer only function with plenty of water. If we look at the global maps of water scarcity, we see two things. One, it's bad. Two, it will get worse. So we better come up with some alternatives to our standard solution. But it's not only water which is a problem. In many places, there is water and there are sewers, but there are no treatment plants. Then it may look like this. This is from Maryland in the US. Too many nutrients have killed these fish. And untreated wastewater being discharged directly into the surface waters is contributing to this problem. It's a problem which increased with population growth and with climate change. Just listen to the radio in the next years. It's mostly a problem of the north. We have sewers bringing wastewater directly into the surface waters, but the south will become their part too. At my institution, we started to look for alternatives to conventional wastewater treatment some 15 years ago. Like many other, at the same time, we came up with the idea of source separation. This just means that the single sources of domestic wastewater are kept apart. There are three main streams. A small amount of feces, but responsible for most of the pathogens leading to diarrhea. Urine containing most of the nutrients leading to fish death in a very small amount of water. And grey water, which is just the rest without toilet waste. We can treat these single streams much better than the combined wastewater. And 
we can extract resources. From feces, we can extract energy and also some fertilizer. And from urine, we can extract nutrients, which is just another word for fertilizer. Grey water is not very polluted, so we can extract water from it. At my institution, at Airwalk, we ran a large project on urine source separation, which we call Nomex Technology. We interviewed hundreds of people. We worked together with toilet producers. We developed technology for nutrient recovery, and we checked it for whether we could use it in agriculture. It was a long project. It was a large project. But after six years of research, we were convinced that, yes, source separation is a good answer to the global problems of wastewater management. At my institution, they installed no mixed toilets. It's just a normal flush toilet. But in the front, urine is separated. And this fertilizer has been produced from these installations. In the last years, there have been an increasing awareness of the scale of the sanitation crisis in developing countries. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation recently started a sanitation program, and Airwalk has got two projects within this project. Both of these projects are based partially on our experience with Nomex technology and partially on the huge experience in the Airwalk department on sanitation in developing countries, Sandek. The first project is called VUNA. It means harvest in Zulu. Our colleague runs this together with the Durban um, Water Services. And the idea is to collect urine from a large number of toilets with two goals. Protect the water resource of Durban, which is endangered from these toilets, and produce much needed fertilizer for urban agriculture. Our Durban colleagues are now optimizing the collection of urine from these small toilet buildings, which are used in the areas of Durban where there are no sewers. The toilet, the uri urine diverting dry toilet used within these buildings, is a huge improvement of sanitation as compared to pit latrines. It's the same principle, urine in the front, feces in the back, but it's dry. But from the user's point of view, there are still room for improvement. In the second project, where I'm personally more involved, we are responding to the gates reinvent the toilet challenge. And we want to come up with such toilets which are attractive and which can be embedded within a system of transport and resource recovery and replicated in a large number of informal settlements. The core is still a sort of urine diverting dry toilet. But when urine and feces have been diverted, we can flush the toilet uh, and, of course, wash the hands. The water used for hand washing and flushing is collected behind the toilet, it's treated and recycled back to use again. Feces and urine is brought to a nearby resource recovery plant where fertilizer and perhaps even some uh, energy, surplus energy, is produced. It looks amazingly simple, but there are, of course, a few challenges. There's the toilet design, water recycling, resource recovery plant, and we also have to adapt all this to a socio-economic reality. Fortunately, we have a super team, so I'll shortly tell you what this team intends to do with all this. Our design partner from EOS in Austria plans to design the toilets as a piece of furniture, including all the technology. This can even be installed in an existing toilet building. 
The water recovery, we depend on already existing technology. This is a gravity-driven membrane filtration developed by Erwart colleagues for, water, for drinking water production in developing countries. It functions totally without energy and without maintenance. We are going to adapt this to the much more to the stronger wastewater from our installation. Um, and in principle, we know how to do this. The difficulty is to do this without more energy than what people can produce themselves, for instance, with this foot pump, which you saw in the last picture. I'm not really going to talk about the resource recovery plan, because in this project we are not uh, developing technology for this, we're just evaluating existing technology. This technolo technology, for instance, prepare the urine for being distilled and turned into fertilizer. It's placed at our own institution, and chances are good that one day it will also be in your institution. But not going into technology allows me to turn to the socio-economic embedment. We are doing our reality checks in Kampala in cooperation with colleagues from the local university. There are two main challenges. One of them is to organize the transport from one toilet to the resource recovery plant. The other is to set up an overall business plan. Fortunately for the last uh, task, we have support from a business administrator from another department at EAVAC. Even in this small project, there are plenty of challenges. But nevertheless, we are convinced that source separation will help solve the major problems of urban water management in developing, but also in industrialized countries. Our colleagues in Durban, they are now installing flush Nomex toilets in their own facilities with the idea of spreading this technology also into the middle class area of Durban. And it would be unthinkable to plan this new living lab without source separation of wastewater. And we are certainly involved in the planning of this experimental guest house where scientists and industry will work together on the building technology of tomorrow including Nomex toilets, including source separation of wastewater, and including some of the reactors which we develop for Durban at the moment, which we have in our own office buildings, and which we will also use in the um, informal settlements. I would be very proud if I could tell my grandchildren that I had been involved in the development of the toilet that they use every day at a time when source separation was still considered revolutionary.